So what is an Arduino? Arduino is actually the name of the company that manufactures those boards. And you might find Arduino or Genuino. The only difference is that Genuino sells in the United States and Arduino in the rest of the world. Unfortunately, they had some problems and they had to divide. So the Arduino is a board that gets information from the physical world, things that you can touch, can feel, you can smell, and makes it into information that can be understood in the digital world. Then you can use this information in the digital world, like inside the computer, or you can manipulate this information and send back to the physical world. But how it does that? So the Arduino has inputs and outputs, and with a little bit of coding in a C-based language, you can tell what those inputs and outputs will do. So for example, something for our area, you can get a button, which is an input, is going to read something from the physical world. And then, with a little bit of coding, we're gonna tell to the computer that every time you press one button, you want to send a MIDI note. Or you can connect a potentiometer and actually read the position of that potentiometer and tell to the computer, every time you move that potentiometer, send a MIDI control change. Or you can use the outputs of the Arduino. You can connect LED strips or motors, and for example, you can even get information from the digital world, like MIDI, and tell to the Arduino to control those lights or those motors with MIDI. So really the possibilities of the Arduino are endless. You can make MIDI controllers with the Arduino, but you can make also robots, home automation, art installation, and like so many things. And one of the coolest things about the Arduino is that it was made for people without a huge background in engineering. So it's really easy to learn if you don't have any knowledge in this field like I did and like you're going to do now. So let's get a little bit technical in the Arduino. What it exactly is. The Arduino is basically a really tiny computer without an operational system. So you don't have an operational system like Mac OS or Windows that you can go there with your mouse and select the application. It's all running inside this brain, which is a microcontroller, which means that you're going to code your Arduino and then it's going to function like that forever, until you change the code, uploading the code to the Arduino again. So talking about uploading the code, the way you actually program the Arduino is through an IDE, which is an Integrated Development Environment. So the Arduino has its own IDE, which works with the C-based language. So it's based in the C language, but in a much easier way for us to use it. So I told you that the Arduino has a microcontroller, or a brain. So this microcontroller might be different in different models of Arduino. So one thing about the Arduino is that there are many different models of Arduinos. And one thing that may vary in the Arduinos is the type of microcontroller. So for example, we have the Arduino Uno, the Arduino Mega, the Arduino Leonardo, Micro, Pro Micro, Lillipad, and the list goes on and on. Another difference between the Arduinos is the number of inputs and outputs. And this can play a big role in which type of Arduino is ideal for your project. If you just need, for example, 10 buttons, you can use an Arduino Uno, an Arduino Micro, Pro Micro. But if you need 50 buttons, for example, you may want to use an Arduino Mega because the Arduino Uno doesn't have that many inputs. Although you can make it have more inputs, but that's more advanced stuff. So the Arduino has inputs and outputs, right? However, we have different types of inputs and different types of outputs. So let's talk about the inputs. The Arduino has two different types of inputs. You have digital inputs and you have analog inputs. So what is the difference between them? So for example, if you want to connect a component that just has two states, like on and off, so a button, you just can press or unpress, right? A button that's not velocity sensitive. It's just on and off, or a switch that's on and off. Everything that's just on and off, you're going to connect in the digital input. But in the other hand, if you have a sensor that's not just on and off, that you actually have a range, you have a minimum and a maximum, like a potentiometer, you're gonna connect in the analog input. 
So for example, you can connect rotary potentiometer, slide potentiometers, a light sensor, a humidity sensor, a distance sensor, any type of sensor. And that's the magic of actually building your own thing. Now you're not attached to the only like potentiometers and the same thing over and over again that you find in MIDI controllers. You can build for MIDI controllers now to amazing art installations that can track what the environment is doing. Like you can put in the soil and know like what is the humidity of the soil, what this tree is telling you, what is the temperature, what is the, the time of the day is telling you and how you can translate this into music. This is pretty fucking mind blowing. And once you know how to do it, it's like the sky is the limit. And what about the outputs? Actually, the Arduinos most have only digital outputs, but some of those outputs can emulate an analog output. So this means that you can actually, for example, connect an LED that's just on and off, or you can connect an LED and actually change its brightness. So this is a topic that we don't need to talk about now because you're not going to use LEDs like that. But keep in mind that you can actually do that. So to recap, basically you can get an Arduino, connect things to its inputs like buttons and potentiometers in the digital and analog inputs. Then in the computer, in the Arduino's IDE, you can write some code to tell what's going to happen when you press those buttons, right? Or move those potentiometers. Then you're going to upload this code to the Arduino and then your Arduino is done. You can disconnect from the USB, you can actually use a MIDI port or you can use even the USB to send MIDI to the computer. And this is just the beginning. Then you can connect LEDs and you can even control motors or you can connect different types of sensors and then expand, expand, expand to really complex and advanced interfaces. And to end our conversation about the Arduino, I want to talk about one of the most amazing things about this board is that it is completely open source. And being open source means that the source code for its IDE and the source files for the boards are open for you to see how it's done, how it's made, and it's open for you to use for yourself which means that you can get the files of the board of the Arduino and build one yourself and you can even sell it. This means that actually there are companies in China that are making Arduinos that are so cheap. You can buy an Arduino for like two dollars. Can you imagine that? And of course, what we do is that we buy at least one or more boards from the company, the original ones, so you can actually support the project but after we can buy really really cheap boards. So that's it guys, that's our brief introduction about the Arduino and about MIDI controllers and about this amazing world which is the DIY world, right? So now what